What's going on Sega Jitters? In this video we're going to start getting our door shell ready to accept our new reproduction door skin. Hey Russell, they don't need to see all that. I can put a card in the corner that links them to that video that shows all that. What do you mean? This never gets old. Look, I'm the only one working on these cars. All you do is stand in front of that camera going, What's up YouTube? I need some help. Get these things done. This got burned. guys let's get serious for a minute before this door was actually removed I went ahead and uh, just took some reference marks of the gaps and the gaps aren't perfect here we've got a kind of a line that gets a little wider there on the bottom. Okay, right here at the front, we're right at a quarter of an inch. And it stays that way until we get down here to the rear corner. And it just barely raises up a little bit. The body lines are lined up on this car. Just for a quick reference, I've got the uh, eighth and three sixteenths and quarter inch marked out. And you can see here we're kind of in between an eighth and three sixteenths. And then as we get below the body line on the door, it starts to widen up on us. The front of the door may need to come up. I don't have the fender on the car. But what I do have is these reference marks and this will give us an idea. I believe this is close enough for what we're doing. This will give us a reference point between factory door and our factory quarter panel and we'll have something to go by when we put the new skin on so guys let's talk a little bit about why you'd want to skin a door the main reasons is going to be number one accident damage number two rust damage this door right here doesn't look too bad there's a rust hole starting to come through right here in the corner that's where you'll typically find rust at on these second gen doors. Also the hem flange, and I'll show you a close up of this. The hem flange is starting to swell along the bottom, so there is rust in it. The uh, body line here has about uh, probably six to eight good dents in it along this area right here. And then up here where the uh, sport mirror goes, somebody has done a number on this skin trying to put mirrors on it because there's uh, at least one, two, three, there's six holes up here. And uh, evidently I think maybe the mirror had gotten loose at some point and they probably moved it and reattached it. But overall, it's not too bad of a door. This could actually really be fit. It wouldn't really need a complete door skin. For all my subscribers that's been with me for a long time, you guys know that uh, the reason we're doing this door as far as skinning it is for practice with the reproduction door skin before we actually commit to some NOS ones for our 1972 Camaro. All right, so we're at the back of the door looking down inside of it. And this is probably the worst of it looking from the inside. But you can see how that rust is actually creeping up from the seam there. And it's uh, made its way about probably an inch and a half up into the door skin. There's also another place right in there. And then that back corner there. Like I said, that is the usually the worst spot on these Camaros. And you can see there's definitely a lot of rock back in there. Right here's a good look at our hem flange. And you can see right here that this uh, flange has already started to swell from rust. And it's been my personal experience. There's really no way to get that out unless you just replace it. 
the rest of it don't look too bad you could come in here and cut some of this out and replace it if you wanted to this door is really not in too bad a shape okay guys so i've got the uh, door on the stand and i've got my notebook out and i've just been going around taking some notes of the actual door some of the key locations that I can get a reference measurement from basically from the shell to the outside of the skin and you can see here I've, I've wrote those measurements down something else that I've done I've used two different styles of uh, measuring tapes one's just a regular ruler and then the other is a seamstress tape and I made notes of that as well as far as uh, which ones I used and exactly where I positioned them at because there's nothing really flat on this door frame it's just gonna help me have a better reference point I don't know if they'll be the same with the new skin hopefully they're close but at least we've got some good notes here to fall back on we know exactly where we were at with the original skin versus the reproduction here's our folded edge of the door skin and to actually remove this door skin, all I'm going to do is take a grinder and I'm going to grind this edge until it just starts to separate. You'll see it on camera. You'll see it turn colors. And it's th at that point that I'm going to stop. One thing that you don't want to do is grind too much and actually grind into the door shell. Because there's an edge there of the door shell that we actually need. For our new skin to actually wrap around so let's take a look at some of the tools that we're going to be using obviously we've got our uh, PPE for our safety we've got three inch cutoff wheel this will actually be used to remove the top of the door skin the top of the door skin is actually welded to the frame and we're going to cut those spot welds loose with that we've got our grinding stone there that's going to be used to uh, grind on the existing spot weld so that we can remove the rest of the hem flange once the bulk of the skins out of the way we've got a five into one prime tool there a couple die grinders a hammer we've got our stack panel separating knife and we've got our four and a half inch grinder and this is I believe a 60 grit flat disc See, I just taking my time and I was making sure that I haven't ground into the door shell. And I haven't. You can see it right there. This area right here, this rusty area, that's our door shell. So that's one side down. We got the other two sides. And then we got to come in here and we got to grind all these tack welds down. See, there's several along the top.
right guys so it is the moment of truth we're getting ready to separate the skin from the frame and I've just been going through and cleaning up some spot welds I did actually rip the metal right there got a little too aggressive that kind of stuff is going to happen we'll just fix it um, that's the only one that happened like that um, just a little weak there and ripped it but um, one thing I wanted to show you is just look how rusty this is and up in this area we didn't have any evidence of of rust but it's just it's just kind of surface rust but then again it's still pretty bad this back corner seems to be really good we'll see what it looks like on once we get the skin separated so best I can tell well, right there's one I missed, so I'll have to get that one, <laughs> and then we should be ready to go. Now, there is a little bit of seam sealer in this bar right here, between the skin and the bar, that sometimes that fights you. Just beware of that. So let me get this one last tack weld, and we'll be ready. Well, that didn't put up much of a fight. Here's that goop I was telling you about they put in here so sometimes this stuff puts up a little bit of a fight this didn't you can see I'm just pulling it right off it looks like I ripped the metal right there too not bad oh we'll fix that with the welder like I said we got to clean all this up here's that rust that we were looking at Corners actually look to be pretty decent. This corner here is not really aligned that well. It almost looks like it may have a little dent right here. We may see if we can push this down just a little bit. We might not be able to do anything with it. That's pretty stout metal. But if we could move this down, it would fit a little bit better. Overall, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's get this out of the way. We'll take a look at the skin. Overall, it's not really that bad. Uh, this is the area that uh, had the rust hole coming through. But as you can see here, still was plenty of metal left here where the rust had been creeping up in here. Might have been able to treat it and flood the scene. Again, not too bad. So guys, I got a mess to clean up as usual. Our next step's gonna be getting our shell ready for epoxy primer. We'll have to fix a few repairs, get it blasted, and then we'll be ready to epoxy it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Appreciate each and every one of you. With all that said, I'll catch you next time. Thank you.